deliver buyback. And I said this, and I'll do this will be a, a Cabana Crypto Happy Hour special, something that I was never going to attach my name to. I don't think you'll ever see 100K Bitcoin in your life. Hmm. Goodness. That is, a, that is a statement. Yeah. What the fuck does that mean, man? <laughs> the fuck is this? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm just saying that's a bold statement because that is got, bold. you got the whole market moving with Bitcoin, man. Hey, man. If the Bitcoin oh, maxers don't hit you already, it's gotten you're to now. what? It's like sixty nine percent of that. You couldn't you couldn't show me a Bitcoin price that would make me interested. <laughs> I don't think you could. Yeah, no, I'm not saying you know I'm not buying Bitcoin anytime soon, but I recognize its weight in the market. Sure. Hey, man. Um, rotary phones used to have a ton of weight. <laughs> They are actually really heavy. Yeah. So does no shit. And you yeah, Bitcoin could die, and that's that home defense for the maxis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Those you can really slam a phone down. That's something that you can't do. It just doesn't hold the same. Yeah, I went over. I went over the reasoning, and I won't. I won't suck up the airtime with it. But personally, no, I, I, I don't. No see respect, man. I, I yeah, understand. I fully agree. I think that's the one so people haven't really, Bitcoin, we haven't really, really seen. Open. I don't think we got any so like hard Bitcoin ball. maxis, right, Orca, in that space. Like there were just a couple, but you know the more. But, but they, they came to so speak. Here's the thing: they didn't really understand the underlying technology or its limitations. Yeah. So that w when we started to discuss Spectacular. even just bonded liquidity, and they realized that there was a way to kind of escape the power, the gravity of their investment. But then when you start going into modularity, when you start going into the uh, maybe you need the lightning network to be effective. And it's like, is this crypto? Anymore? I mean, let's, yeah. let's like yeah, if, you, if you're looking at mar if, you're, if you're looking at market cap, which whatever that means, I mean, the to like the total the total market cap of all crypto is like one point seven some odd trillion. Mm -hmm. And Bitcoins is less than seven hundred million million. So it's like, you know, a trillion plus dollars of non-bitcoin related money is in the net is in the crypto markets which is considerably more that i mean that's it means Supposedly. bitcoin's like less less than 50 percent of of you know um the like you know the weight in the market because that used to be a pretty big indicator is like the you know sure. what percentage of the market was bitcoin um sure. so i mean it's definitely not nearly as strong as it was. People been. are branching out, even institutions, and it's going to be really exciting once they find hacks. And it could take another three years, and that's, I mean, fine. Yep. I'm happy to be wrong on it because there's a lot of people that would not do well if if you don't uh, pump and set new all-time highs on Bitcoin. And, like, I'm thinking of countries. There's people that would really... Yeah, dude, Bitcoin. fucking El Salvador. So, like, I don't What's take it. What's going to happen in El Salvador like, if it never goes told to you, told you Bitcoin get wrecked. It's just that I don't personally see it. And if anyone wants to make the bull case for 100K Bitcoin, I'll listen. So, yeah. Um, I would say the market, man, the US dollar, right? Because, like, that's the price that you're saying that in is, like... It's not only you know Bitcoin appreciating; it's the USD depreciating. But you see, there's so a huge based difference. Based on that, we're 100 percent going to have 100k Bitcoin. So like, I'll, uh, I'll take that stance. Sure. What's uh, what's Hex's bond of liquidity? To Bitcoin? No, no, no. Just what 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 assets does Hex's liquidity have its backing with? USD. There's two. All right. USDC Ethereum, and a little USDC. bit of ETH. Yeah. Okay. What about Bitcoin? What are the major liquidity pairs for Bitcoin? I don't know. I don't own any. Fair enough. <laughs> so ETH, ETH is a big one. But then there's a huge difference between USDC and the US dollar. And there is a lot of fiat currency that is paired with Bitcoin. Why? Because Bitcoin is on centralized exchanges. And there's, there's fiat on-ramping that is not going through a crypto. They're not going US dollar into USDC into Bitcoin. <clears throat> so what happens if the asset that you're paired in with liquidity depreciates? So you're not getting the same effect. You're not getting the effect of there's a layer of economics that people don't discuss when they talk about the liquidity bonding of HEX. Yeah, it's phenomenal to be paired to USDC, but you wouldn't like it if you were paired to the US dollar. Because hmm. that shit is going down every day. Walk me through how that helps pump the price of X. But there's a huge difference between the increase of the supply of the M2 and the increase of supply of USDC. Those are two totally different things. Hmm. 
That's a great point. A yeah. lot of liquidity in Bitcoin is backed by the US dollar, backed by Euro, backed by uh, the Japanese won. Hmm. Those aren't those aren't stable coins, guys. Hmm. And there's a difference between a stable coin and a fiat currency. There is. And you're saying so what exactly would you say is the relationship between the USDC and the USD? That you can exchange one for one. They're just pegged to Yep. Which, Okay, so it's pegged. So whatever you, happens, you, you to, USD, whatever happens no. to USD happens to USDC. No, because the supply is different. The supply is different. Okay, ex explain why that matters. That would matter because if you just took every single dollar that's printed and then turned it into USDC, you're going to have the exact same price effect of what's happening to the dollar and USDC. But if those supplies are different, then the liquidity thickness in the book is significantly different. So I'm not inflating and thus depreciating the circulating supply of USDC and the proportion of USDC that can be allocated to any given asset, call it hex, is going to be unaffected. But if I was pegged to the US dollar and every single time the US dollar's value depreciated, then my liquidity pairing depreciated, that would be miserable. I would not support that. So it comes down to liquidity pools. Of course. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. You really realize, you know, how dumb market cap is, you know, when you yeah. like really look at the prices and whether you've got order books and central exchanges or liquidity pools on DeFi, you know, it's a it's a it's always, you know, a a more nuanced story than what you first hear. So a little a little um, anecdotal supporting argument. What happened to um, the price of Bitcoin when the uh, BITO Bitcoin futures ETF hit the market. Have we seen a blown off top because all of these people are able to invest in bullish Bitcoin? No, they, I mean, I think it was pretty well known that that wasn't a direct effect on Bitcoin. Sure, but, but wouldn't it be a bullish sentiment because it's more, it's more marketing, it's more money flow? How is it a negative externality? Um, because it's like money that might have gone into BTC that is now going into these futures that don't actually pump the price of BTC. Okay, and what about grayscale? I mean, it's kind of similar, but there's it's a premium, solid. right? That fluctuates. Walk me to a hundred k Bitcoin. I am all ears. Yeah, I just think like a bunch of people are going to buy it. So, so your so to understand your position is that Bitcoin won't get to 100k, but the rest of the market will be fine. Oh my gosh, yes, it will blow right. Yeah, past I mean, me. I could buy. I, I, yeah, sure. I'm not I saying it's that. Crypto, like, I don't, man. I don't give a fuck about Bitcoin, but I worry that like Bitcoin has the crypto brand, like Coca Cola has soda. When you talk to so, no see, this coiners in real life, you brought up that's what you because find. This is what I was discussing last and night. And that's when it comes down to like branding and marketing and just super like how people understand I super this. love that. When I was in Guatemala, uh, there, was a, there was a branding similar to like you might see the Budweiser branding or you said Coca-Cola. And I use that exact same example. In America, we see a ton of Coca-Cola advertisements. In yeah. Guatemala, the number one advertisement that you'll see is Cerveza de Gallo. It's a beer brand. Okay. Now, I was out in the jungle, an eight-hour flatbed truck ride through unpaved roads in the mountains into a village that doesn't even speak Spanish. They speak Kachi. And there was a billboard in the thick of the jungle for Cerveza de Gallo. Now, just because I see a sign for Cerveza de Gallo does not mean that I'm going to become an alcoholic or even that I have to like beer. But it might still trigger a little bit of thirst that I want quenched. I can go to the store and I can get water. I can get orange juice. I can buy Coca-Cola. There are tons of substitutes. So what Bitcoin is really doing, in my opinion, is bringing awareness to the alternative to fiat currency, and that is crypto. But why, if I begin to learn about the alternatives, would I sign up for the thing that will absolutely be a worse version? You want to be um, hungry every day? Because that's your first association with the idea of financial sure. freedom or whatever the meme it is. That your first association was probably breast milk, son. Like, what are you? <laughs> you still, you still suck. I would. I still day? love breast milk. Yeah, sure. Who doesn't? But you probably drink more water these days, right? <laughs> yeah, like it's an interesting debate for sure. We'll I don't have know. anything on the Bitcoin side, <laughs> but just to make you know, to make it interesting, you know, just to play mm -hmm. devil's advocate. I mean, I, yeah, I mean. Bitcoin, it's like, you know, GE, right? Like certain stocks just kind of, certain assets can die. And 
that could definitely happen to Bitcoin. You know, there's no, there's right. Like what companies are behind it really that like are pushing to get it, you know, to the masses and. Because do you get into Bitcoin because you just want a store of value that will never on its own be an effective mode of transaction? Or do you get into it because of the concept of crypto? I guess is my question. Yeah. I think there's you get a, it when you don't know what you're doing. Like you're curious enough to know that you want to get into crypto, but you don't necessarily understand it. I bet like most of the new money is in that. Very People cool. not so then, really understanding. So then let's talk about uh, marketing as a function of price, right? Because that's what we're getting at is it's mm-hmm. the first thing you hear about. But when when is it easier for you to onboard your friends in the hex? Is it when it drops 70% or when it's rocketing two or three X in a matter of weeks? Definitely at the high, everybody, I, I, sure. I agree with Richard, you know, people love so to buy the high. Top. People are probably learning about Bitcoin faster today than they are seven years ago. Is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. What does the Bitcoin chart look like for the last nine months? Terrible. Okay. Pretty good marketing for just about anything else, right? Yeah, but like Hex, for example, you know, looks similar, you know, I told some on board, you know, and the girlfriend's sure. like, oh, it's down. I'm like, you know, it's sure. like, they're not, you know, they don't have the log chart. The, 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 the default is linear, no log, like looks like shit. Totally. There's, there's still an advantage for hex there. So you got to understand the like the perspective bias. of that, like totally new person that's yeah, like looking at right. it, you know? Unit bias Sorry, go ahead. The, yeah, the, the unit bias thing is huge because, you know, with, yes. with Bitcoin, it's already so high that people can only, the, the average person right now can only afford to buy, you know, 0. 0.0001 Bitcoin. They, they don't really feel, you know, like they're um, changing their life, with, you know, right. like when, when they have such a lot of small amount of something. But, you know, when you can buy thousands or tens of thousands of, of something, you know. Yeah, it makes like, a big difference. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that definitely plays a role in the marketing, I would say. Right. And you tell people, you know, it's, it's two years old. You're still early, you know, these projects that are about to come out. Yeah. I, wait, I find wait, wait. selling selling like Hex and Richard Hart, I think, is very easy. I think, once too, you once, you, once you've bought it and you see your balance. That, too. Bitcoin, the T-shares, they start to come in. You're like, how did this money even, like. Sure. But think about it on the Bitcoin side. Say that you're a genius uh, and you identify 38K as the Bitcoin bottom. Yeah, And everybody was just telling you for the last nine months that you were going to have 100K Bitcoin by the end of the year, which I believe, if my calendar is not deceiving me, is 2022 now. It's almost February. Pretty sure. So you're holding on for your 100K Bitcoin because that's the next mega leap, apparently. Maybe. Yeah, but maybe maybe you're buying in Voyager and you're getting you know 6% interest every month on your maybe. Bitcoin. You think that's where the majority of the money is? No, but I think that like, think it's that like can happen to people that come into crypto. Like they can just get stuck there, and then they can they'll go from there, and then they'll say, "Okay, I got some profits," and they'll buy some shit coins and stuff they can't even move. You know, like I think there's still a lot of work that the hexagon community has to do. You know, peer to peer. It I think it's still very pivotal right now to get people into the Richard Hart ecosystem because otherwise it is way too easy for them to get on one of these centralized exchanges Mm -hmm. and get caught up in in the lottery game. Um. Hey, I wanted to get a little breaking news here on stream and excellent conversation, Orca and Jay Future, by the way. Thank you. Uh, Richard Hart. Oh, shit. Pulsechain.com. We're making the Ethereum to Pulse Chain bridge public for testing. This is just a tell URL or servers. Very cool. Do that with what you just one last point uh, to get back because future was talking about the centralized exchanges. Walk me through the road to 100 k Bitcoin when I'm taking out 100 X leverage long on Bitcoin. The, the order book is entirely privatized for these centralized exchanges. They can see exactly where the price needs to go to liquidate your position. You, are we all are we all in the stream comfortable? 100x leverage at 17k Bitcoin. I learned the hard way playing around on Bitmax. <laughs> I think a lot of people have learned probably in the last two weeks. 
I'll just pass because I, I don't want Bitcoin. Yeah, but, I don't either. <laughs> Who says I don't want Bitcoin? I mean, I maybe I'll get one for a souvenir. It'd be, but, you know, it'd be fun to talk about. It'll be like a douche. It'll be like, well. oh, I got one of those little things over there. Yeah. It doesn't scale well. Yeah. Hey, uh, Agape, I see you there. Are you are you on, man? Because I. Uh, yeah. What is no, up, I'm brother? Here. I'm just hey. at the hotel right now. And oh, cool. We just nice. finished interviewing everyone for the workshop. I just figured to take the video away because it might help the connection. Well, you look great right now. Oh, so. okay. Well, then fuck. I'll keep it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, uh, I don't know how much you got, got to hear, but I went through pretty much the whole gamut there. But oh, cool. I, I do want to throw it over to you just in terms of like how can people participate? I was telling them, hey, you know, you on Twitter, uh, yeah. Motley Investor. Uh, but how, how what, what do people need to do here? The best way to do it for us is let us know if you're verbally committed and we'll take that word seriously and we'll put you on our Google sheet that we've collected over $200,000 worth of commitments. And when we hit that 600,000 mark or even 550, like I've been talking to the sponsor, um, you know, I think he's going to work with us regardless. Um, if we can get at break five, like let's break five and then we can have a real conversation then I would go to everyone like, look, we got our goal, you know, send your money to either Motley on the address or we can do USD. Um, however, that works for people, wires or bank transfers. Um, and then that's how we would get it done. But we're not asking for any money up front. We just want a serious verbal commitment. Um, your word is your bond, just like, you know, Richard Hart teaches us. The truth. And yeah, so we have six full days. Well, five and a couple hours left in this night. 200k in 48 hours pretty sweet um i think it's 100 percent possible so um i don't know if i could share one little thing uh cabana about whatever you want man why i'm doing it um you know i think when we talk about marketing you know these these ploys don't exactly pay off necessarily we don't we don't expect a price pump necessarily right away um but for me the inspiration came that nascar fans would resonate with richard hart you know, I, I just got done interviewing a guy who works in a hardware store, but now he retired because he was he put in a couple hundred bucks, a couple thousand. And I mean, he's just a multimillionaire now. And he just worked. He was a blue collar worker two years ago and now he's retired. And like, I feel like that resonates with the NASCAR audience. A lot. A lot of the majority of the guys, they're hardworking people. They want to know where they could put their money and Richard's a straight shooter. Those are the types of, those guys love that type of talk. So, um, dead on Ricky. Oh, I thought you were saying like I'm dead or something, but yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so that, that, that's my thought on why NASCAR, somebody tweeted, you know, some of them are racist. We shouldn't do this. We shouldn't get into politics. I'm, I'm brother. I'm sorry, but like, that's not, my head wasn't there at all. And if we're going to think about that, then we've already been defeated. So that's just noise. Don't even let that get in the way. That's not truth. Um, so just don't let that be like a deterring factor. For oh, my anything. gosh. Well, something like that never even registered in my mind. And I'm, I mean, a, I'm know, a lifelong it just, NASCAR fan. It just goes fan, in and out. I go, you know what? Continuing on. You, you, know? You, you get a headline from the news spelled yeah. with a Z and you think a certain way. It's like, yeah. what in the uh, – stop. All right, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, again, it's it's the full car. It's all the uniforms, the crew, the pit, 10 owner passes. You get to go on the race, like on the floor. You get to go to the driver's meeting, and you get to meet other owners. Michael Jordan owns a team. Pitbull owns a team. Dolly. NAS NASCAR has been <laughs> more uh, – it's been cool. It's been coolized a little bit. It's actually mm -hmm. like more mainstream and popular. It's going to be the most watched Daytona 500 of all time. The most eyes on it. I mean, that's just in an opportunity for Grant, the director. You know, I talked to him from the highest stakes. Maybe he'll hop over and, and, and check in and uh, maybe shoot something. Um, you know, what a moment in time for us to be on the Daytona 500, like on a car. And J.J. Ely's a great driver. He actually could win the race. The Daytona 500 is, is up for grabs. That and Talladega, as Cabana was talking about yesterday, it's kind of anyone's race. Um, and he's not a start and park kind of guy or whatever it's called where they go drive and then put their like car away. This guy's like shake and bake Ricky Bobby. If you ain't first, you're last. Like that's this guy. He's, he's a real driver. He's committed to, to winning and he knows what we're trying to do and he'd love to do it. 
the driver himself. So with a um, lot of power yeah, under the hood too. Feel and sticking to it. Yeah, with a lot of power under the hood, Hendrick Motors, man. So yep, huge. So yes, good to know he's a good driver. Yeah, I mean he he runs I think full time Xfinity, which is a series right below uh, the big boys. But you know some of these guys get sponsors that they, they're going to run. So. Yeah, and and they did say if we don't reach this, I uh, just talked to April today. She's the rep, main rep um, for Josh, and she was like. We could talk about the whole Xfinity um, season if you want. Like if we if we maybe we get to 400 and it just really doesn't seem like we were.